When it comes to finding a suitable alternative for Microsoft Office, LibreOffice is widely considered to be one, if not the best solution to take its place. And the best part, it also works on Linux. There are, however, a couple of obstacles in the way of transitioning to this open source Office suite. Differences in the user interface make it harder to find features if you're not used to it. File formats and cloud compatibility are a big question mark, and if you're using it on Linux, you are also sometimes confronted with visibility issues. So in today's video, I'm going to show you some of LibreOffice's many tools and settings that can ease your transition by not just making it look more like Microsoft Office, but also behave that way. So make sure to stick around and let's get straight into it. LibreOffice is an open source office suite that was once forked from the quite popular Apache OpenOffice. Well, at least popular in terms of not being Microsoft Office. It comes with a word processor, a spreadsheet-like program like Microsoft Excel, as well as a presentation tool for creating slideshows. The whole suite also features a vector graphics editor that kind of resembles Microsoft Visio, a math program for creating more complex mathematical formulas, as well as an alternative to Microsoft Access, which can also interact with some commonly used database solutions. On Windows, you can download and install LibreOffice from the official homepage, and on Linux, you can find it in your distro's package manager. When comparing the graphical user experience, then LibreOffice's approach is a lot different from today's Microsoft solution. While Microsoft 365 nowadays heavily relies on tapped windows, LibreOffice still uses regular menus, which is nice if you're used to it, but also kind of overwhelming if you're just switching. I personally prefer the tapped view, which you should be able to select during first setup or under view user interface. You can also choose if you want to apply this style only to the program you're currently running or the entire suite. Now before we move any further, I quickly wanted to mention that LibreOffice's appearance heavily depends on your desktop environment and if you're using dark mode. On GNOME for example, if you are a dark mode user like me, all of the icons become white, which depending on your monitor and current lighting situation can be suboptimal. We can however change this behavior by first going into Options, View and downloading the Colibri icon theme. This theme in particular is not only the default icon theme on the Windows version of LibreOffice, but it also mimics the style of many icons from Microsoft's Office suite. Just make sure that you use the default theme for light mode and the dark theme for dark mode, and you should be good to go. I normally advise against the use of the SVG based icons, but I've also heard that they work better with fractional scaling. So just try them out and see what works better for you. Oh, and while we are here, if you are new to Linux and ever had to scroll through a lot of pages, then you might have already noticed that you cannot really use auto-scrolling as the middle click on your mouse is instead used for pasting. Luckily for us, we can change this behavior right here under the mouse settings. Alright, so that's a start. But if we take a look through each of the tabs, we notice that each tab does not necessarily contain all of the elements that you might expect. Now this does not mean that these features do not exist, and you often find a lot of them hidden under the drop-down menu on the right. Let's see if we can fix that. If you open the customization options, then under notebook bar, you can enable or disable elements that you might want to use. The way how this works is that you can choose a target like the home tab and start to toggle the settings. The difference between the two options below is that they just further filter each section down, in case you only want to edit a certain part. Now, what is currently not possible is to rearrange the items as you like, even though it looks like you could do it, and it currently also only seems to be compatible with the writer, though this is probably still due to development. Once you are familiarized with LibreOffice and you feel comfortable moving back to the default interface, then you can customize everything in the menus tab anyway. For our tapped view, however, there are still ways how we can enable elements that are not natively displayed. Introducing toolbars, which are on their own, again customizable. You can simply use one of the templates, adjust their elements or create your own. With a right click, you can unlock it and pin it to any edge of the screen you want. A big advantage of this is that they are persistent across the tabs, so you set them up with the tools that you often need and have access to them at any time. Anyway, this is currently the way how you add items that you don't want to search for. Let's talk about formats and fonts. Especially when you're sending files to others or store them in a cloud storage that also comes with their own online office suite. In this case, you might not want to save your file with the open document format, but rather with Microsoft's DocX extension. 
while you of course could choose it every time you save a new file, the faster way is to just set it as the default. In the LibreOffice options under Load and Save and General, there is an option to always save as. And here you want to choose the Office version that is best applicable to you. For cloud storage or professional environments, this is usually the option with Microsoft 365. This is something that you need to set in every program of their suite, by the way. While we are here, you can also set up a timer on when a document backs itself up in case your PC or program crashes for some reason, or choose to autosave entirely. If you set up LibreOffice for the very first time, then you might also want to check the language and local settings, since those determine how dates, currencies and similar display. Normally, these should be set by the system settings, but it's still best to verify, especially when you start with an already open document. Under the LibreOffice Writer settings and Basic Fonts Western, you can choose a different default font for the program as a whole. If working with other people that use Microsoft Office, it might also be a good idea to install some Microsoft fonts beforehand. And lastly, it might also be a good idea to enable the checkbox for word-compatible trailing blanks. Since LibreOffice uses a different approach to spacing, this helps keep the document formatted. And yeah, that's basically it for the writer. Let's move on to the Excel alternative, Calc. Choose the tapped interface, then it's again the same story with the toolbars, and one thing that I didn't show you before is that you can also customize the right-click context menus if you want to. If you don't want to have some elements or change the order of them, then in here you can. And this is actually something that not that many use. Another thing that many don't know is how to import CSV files without drag and dropping them. The truth is exactly the same like in Microsoft Office, except you open a file as a sheet, instead of it being called import this or that. Filtering via columns works with the auto filter. You can create formulas via the inbuilt browser, and a bit more hidden, LibreOffice also features table styles under layout, similar to how Microsoft does it. And you can nowadays also directly save to a cloud storage. Now the first method depends on your distribution and desktop environment. In GNOME, for example, I can connect my Google account or OneDrive to directly access my documents. However, LibreOffice also features some remote location options itself. The thing is that these don't necessarily work all that well, so your results may vary. Now one thing should be said. Collaborative working at the same time is currently not supported. However, in Calc it is already possible via an experimental setting, so we might actually get to see it soon. As for the rest, sure, LibreOffice is not as powerful as Microsoft Office, especially when set files are transferred over to someone else. However, LibreOffice can be quite powerful as of itself. It technically also could run some Visual Basic macros from Microsoft products, but for once support is not all that great and I generally advise against the use of macros anyway, since they can be used for phishing attacks. Anyway, once you've set up your menus and toolbars, as well as adjusted your icon theme and the tapped view, the LibreOffice is actually not half that bad. It's not as polished and modern looking, and it does require a certain workflow change, as some elements are just in very different places. But overall speaking, I'm quite happy with it. If you want a cleaner, but also a bit more restricting Office alternative, then there are of course many more options. But LibreOffice is one of the most powerful ones. And for someone who is just starting out or occasionally needs some Office programs, it should be more than enough. And that is where I leave it. So what do you think of LibreOffice? What are some hard truths on its limitations and did you encounter any? Please let us know in the comment section below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to fund various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Linux and open source videos. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.